Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to test our test case against the code we have just created. And what I'm going to do is move it into this REPL file and share it with you. Here, it's a little easier to see what the code is doing, but it's also easier for me to show you and step through how our function works. This step is very crucial because after we've written our solution in our interview, our interviewer is not only gonna ask us to test our test case, but actually step through each and every step when we test our solution. Now here you'll just see that I have declared our test case array as well as the target we're looking for. This function is the exact same. And then here I'm also console logging the result of calling our function with these two arguments. So here, first let's just run and see what the result is. You'll see that we got three, four, which is the index of these two values, nine and two, which add up to 11. So that's the correct answer. What happens if we remove this and we run this as well? We'll see that we get null, which is also what we expect to return when our case fails and no solution can be found. So let's revert this and let's actually step through what's happening in our code. This is going to seem very tedious because we're going to step through literally every single step of logic that our code walks through with these test cases. But this is what our interviewer is going to expect us to do because they want to see how well we understand what is happening in our code. So before we begin, I'm just going to console log out what these variables are going to get set to. I suggest you write these out when you're actually stepping through them with pencil or paper. And here we're going to log out our P1, but also the value of P1. So here I'm going to say that the value is nums at P1. I'm also going to console log out our number to find. If you're curious, I'm just using JavaScript's object notation so it's more clear. We're able to see based on this key what the value that we're looking at actually is. And then here I'm also going to console.log out p2 and the actual value, which is nums at p2. So now when we run our code, we see all of the steps that are happening when it comes to what our code is doing. So let's begin. Our code initializes with the nums and the target, and then it walks into the first for loop and sets p1 to 0, which is the index of 0 and a value of 1. Number to find gets set as target, which is 11, minus this nums at p1, which is 1, which gives us 11 minus 1, which yields number to find of 10. Then we step into our second for loop, where p2 gets set to p1 plus 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1, and the value at index of 1 is 3, as we can see right here in our array. Then we check, is our number to find, which is 10, equal to 3? It's not. So then p2 increases to 2. And now the array index of 2 is a value of 7. The comparison gets made again. Is 10 equal to 7? It's not. p2 increases again to 3. The value here is 9. And we compare again. Is 10 equal to 9? It's not. So then p2 increments one more time to 4. And then this value is 2. 10 does not equal 2. We've hit the end of our for loop since this loop only works if p2 is less than the length, which is 5. So once p2 increments again to 5, our loop doesn't run. It breaks, and we step to the end of our for loop. There's no more code inside of this for loop, so we step back up into our for loop, and this for loop increments p1 to 1. The value here is 3, since that is the second value in our array. We calculate a new number to find, which is now 11 minus 3, so that gives us 8. Then we step into our for loop again. This time p2 is equal to 2, because it's p1 plus 1. So it's 1 plus 1. That's a value of 7, since that is the third element in the array, and we compare. Is 8 equal to 7? It's not. p2 increases to 3. Is 8 equal to 9? It's not. Then p2 increases to 4, and is 8 equal to 2? It's not. Then we hit the end again. We go back up. p1 increments again to 2, which is our value of 7. 
Our new number to find becomes 11 minus 7, which gives us 4. And then we step back into the second loop of our for loop. Then we recompare again. P2 here gets set to 3 because it's P1 plus 1, as we can see in our code. And then that gives us a value of 9. And now we compare. Does the number to find 4 equal to our current value at P2, which is 9? It doesn't. P2 increments again to 4, which gives us a value of 2. Number to find is 4. It does not equal 2. So once again, our loop breaks. We step up. P1 increments one more time to 3, which gives us a value of 9. And we calculate a new number to find, which is 11 minus 9, which is 2. P2 then initializes in our for loop, this time at 4. And the value here is 2. Number to find of 2 equals our value of 2, which returns us P1 and P2, which is respectively at 3 right here and 4 here, which gives us the correct answer of 3, 4. So I know it's really tedious, and that's honestly what we have to do in the interviews. You just have to practice doing this and not get confused a little bit because this step will take up some time. So the more you practice doing this walkthrough of your code with the test case, the better. So just take all those other test cases that we came up with and apply them here. I've included a link to a screenshot that has all of those test cases in case you forgot them. But I suggest you do it with your handwritten code you can also do it with this REPL if you want to see what's happening, but in the actual interview, you won't have a REPL. Chances are at least you won't. So it's just easier if you were to do it with your pencil paper solution. So please do that with the remaining code, and I will see you in the next lesson.